Morning everybody, welcome, welcome to Breakthrough City Church, welcome to our, our Sunday preach. Uh, hope you're all well, keeping safe, uh, keeping your heads down, uh, trusting God, uh, believing that uh, this is just a season that we're going through and soon we will be back together and enjoying one another's company. But in the meantime, I want to talk about worship, I want to talk about uh, life in the spirit um i want to talk about praise i want to talk about uh we are here on earth to praise that is who we are and uh and that is is what we do uh john calvin who was famous for the reformation said that man's chief end is to glorify god and to enjoy him to enjoy him forever in fact and um in mark 12 Jesus said love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength love your neighbor as yourself there is no commandment greater than these so I'm um, I'm talking if you haven't get, guessed by now about praise and worship um, and uh, I'm talking about us as a community coming together coming together in praise and worship and i want to jump into the the psalm that uh, that charles shared with us on the whatsapp group uh last week i'm going to read it just in case you uh you uh, haven't seen it or not part of that group but it's uh, psalm 24 and verses 7 to 10 and uh, hopefully you'll see the link to the song I've just played. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. And <laughs> what an encouraging, what a beautiful um, word, what a beautiful psalm. And, but who are the gates? You know, it talks about uh, these, these gates, uh, these doors. And, and the answer is, is we are. We are the gates. Um, we are the gates, the doors that allow his kingdom to come. That great prayer um, of Jesus, uh, your kingdom come. Yeah, we, <laughs> God designed us to bring the kingdom uh, into uh, our world, into this creation, his creation. We are the, the gates. And, and straight away, I want to ask the question, what type of, of gate are you? And um, please, for those of you that are very artistic, uh, please don't giggle too much at my drawings. So I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this is a city gate uh, from the time of Jesus. And um, it's, can I say, it's designed for traffic. Yeah, there's a defensive element, there's a protective element. But the purpose of these gates is to, for them to open wide and to let everybody who should be going through through those gates and that is who we are in the kingdom of god we are these gates these doors and but we can be again excuse the artwork we can be a little less effective you know this is a stronghold rather than a city uh, and it's designed to keep people out <laughs> It's designed purely for protection. And yes, there is a door halfway up the wall uh, with a ladder that can be taken away. But the purpose of this is for people to retreat into it in a time of conflict and to keep safe, keep away. It's a stronghold and spiritual strongholds uh, can live within us and can prevent us from being effective for the kingdom of God. So I just, I'm asking, what type of gate are you? What type of gate 
am I? And who is this king that this um, psalm talks about? Well, you know, <laughs> it's one king and it's three kings. It's Jesus Christ, it's Father God, it's the Holy Spirit. They all access our lives and the communities we live in through us, through you and me. Um, we have to open ourselves up, the gates, the doors. We are the spiritual pathway between heaven and earth. Uh, Lord, your kingdom come. And access is given as we lift our heads. It talks about us lifting our heads, lift up your heads. And that's worship and praise. That's, <laughs> that's how we, uh, we give God access. We honor him. We worship him. We give ourselves to him. And that happens in two ways. The first in the psalm, it says, lift up, lift up our heads. It tells us to lift our heads up. It says, look, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling low, if you're troubled, come to me in worship. Lift up your head. Uh, make good choices that give access uh, to your life through repentance or forgiveness. Accepting the lordship of Christ and our sonship. It's both. It's his lordship and our sonship and then it says be lifted up so it's spiritual it's supernatural uh, through healing and deliverance through spiritual warfare he comes and he abides and he lives in us and because of that he lifts our heads he lifts our heads and uh, as we humble ourselves he exalts us, he strengthens us, uh, he sustains us, and we open, we open our lives, open our gates and our doors to him, for him to come in for our benefit, yes, but also for our community, for, for the world. And, and so within my, my theme, if you like, of, of praise, of worship, I, I feel God is wanting me to focus in on us as a community, uh, yes, we as individuals worship and we as individuals praise. And one day, hopefully very soon, we're going to come back together in our venue and we're going to sing our hearts out and we're going to worship and praise as a community. And so it's in that context that God is seeking worship and praise. Yes, he loves it when I sing on my own, um, he loves it when I sing on my own, and Cheryl loves it when I sing on my own as well, um, for other reasons. But um, I just want to throw th three scriptures at you, uh, and I'm doing a bit of room clearance here. It's like I'm pulling the pin on a grenade and throwing it in uh, to, to wake, wake people up. So the first scripture is Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar first. Go and be reconciled to them. And then come and offer your gift. Then there's Isaiah 58 verse 6. Is it not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free? and break every yoke verse 7 is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood what about matthew 15 and verse 8 <laughs> these people honor me with their lips we get into trouble for using the term these people nowadays don't we uh, but there it is. These people, talking about the people of God, these people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. So, <laughs> for us today, if we ver worship or we fast or we give, without having true consideration for the community God has placed us in, the fellow believers, the, the neighbours, the, 
the nations, the community surrounding us and the wider world, these activities, worship, fasting, giving, are in vain. They are worthless. <laughs> As it's put in Isaiah 64, 6, all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Ouch. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the main, having said all of that, I'm in Romans 15 this morning, and I'm going to read the first 13 verses to you. Here we see Paul writing to the Roman church about accepting one another as Jesus accepts us. So here we go. Uh, Romans 15 from verse 1. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbours for their good, to build them up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed. And moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. Again it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, let all the peoples exalt him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will rise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. And then a prayer. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him, so that you may, may overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. So there we have it, the spiritual life, the worship, the praise, the spiritual life. And there's some challenges here, boy, are there some challenges. So the strong then, uh, and that's most of us, because we're in a family and uh, the family builds us up. The strong bear with the weak and their failings. Uh, that might be our children, it might, might be uh, people that we're discipling in the church, it, it might be our leaders at times. Uh, they might be vulnerable and in need of our support and prayer. Uh, the strong are not to please ourselves. Uh, it's not selfish ambition, I spoke about that uh, before. Uh, but we're to please our neighbours. And who did Jesus say our, our neighbours were? Do you remember? Something about foreigners, the Samaritan. Yeah, something like that, wasn't it? He, he did good to the guy who was beaten up by the robbers, a foreigner. Yeah, anyway, anyway, let, before I get too, too caught up in that, to do them good, to build them up. And then he talks about the example of Christ who did not please himself and he quotes Psalm 69 9 the insults of those who insulted you have fallen on me so in doing all of this in loving your neighbor loving your enemy you will be insulted <laughs> as you live like Jesus and you're to do it anyway well this is not something we we do on our own we do it in community uh, and this, this uh, section of scripture encourages us. There's, uh, there's encouragement here. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So we have the whole of the word of God that came before us that teaches us these things. So that through the endurance 
taught in the scriptures. So there's teaching, and the teaching encourages endurance. And the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Bing! There we are, hope. So there's teaching, and the teaching uh, encourages us and in, builds our endurance that we might have hope. And But it talks about... Um, this thing, as I was saying, of being lifted up, that we're not, we're not expected to just be superhumans and, uh, and be nice to our neighbours in our own strength. Because um, it says, may God, in there, may God who gives endurance and encouragement. So he not only talks about all this stuff, teaching us, encouraging us, uh, training us in endurance, but he gives he gives endurance and he gives encouragement through the spirit. That's why it's spiritual. That's why uh, we are to be gates. We are to be open to the spirit, that the spirit may come in to our lives and impact our lives, that we might be an encouragement. We might accept others. And also... May God give you the same attitude. Here it is. The attitude of mind towards each other that Jesus Christ had. So, do we need to ask for this attitude or you know, does it just happen? You know, spirit comes in, attitude changes. I think it's both. Um, I think there is a supernatural element to this. But it is about character. I mean, how we, how we respond to other people is, is about character. It's not simply, um, you know, this, this thing's going to happen. We're on autopilot. We're nice because we're on autopilot. No, we need to ask. We need to ask God to, we need to invite him in. We need to give him permission to change us. And we need to see what needs to change and ask. We may need to deal with stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you the picture again. We may have strongholds that we need to deal with. And um, unforgiveness, bitterness. This stuff can be a barrier. Uh, so we need, need to be intentional about asking. But coming back to, uh, to the, this, this scripture in, in Romans, why, why is it so important? Why can't I just get on with my life, um, be with my family uh, and build my business and go to my church? Uh, why, why do I have to be you know, involved with all this, this other stuff, these other people? Um, it says, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there it is. It's all about his glory. It's not about my comfort. <laughs> yeah, uh, it may be easier, you know, at home um, or in my comfortable church, if there is such a thing. Um, it may be easier just to focus on my business or um, you know, what God has called me to in the, in the micro. You know, I'm a lecturer or I'm a nurse or I'm a doctor or... Uh, I'm I'm a businessman, or whatever it is that that is the thing that you mainly do. You know, it'd be so much easier if you could f forget the rest of the Bible and just just focus on that. But God is saying, if you are to glorify me, if you are to praise me and worship me, then accept one another, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. So Jesus, who did he accept? Well, there were beggars and prostitutes, uh, soldiers, robbers, children, priests, women, foreigners, government workers, the tax collectors, business people. The list goes on, on, and they're not all very comfortable to be around. Um... Beggars aren't comfortable people to be around. They make demands of us. 
And he accepts you and he accepts me. So we are to accept one another. <clears throat> For God in Christ was a servant of the Jews, which confirmed the word, the promises of the Old Testament, and is merciful to the Gentiles. Again, confirming the word, confirming the, the history of the Bible, um, but so that they may glorify God. There it is, praise and worship again. And the second half of this, uh, this section uh, of Romans 15 quotes the Old Testament. And I just want to, to run through that quickly. So it quotes 2 Samuel 22, 50. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. So the believers, the true Israelites, are called to be among, to be with the other peoples, uh, the foreigners, the, the previously outcast. Quoting Deuteron Deuteronomy 32, 43, again, it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. So now the, the outsiders, the outcasts, are now included, have been drawn in. They are with his people. The foreigners are praising with his people. The, the believers, the true Israelites, now includes the Gentiles. And quoting um, Psalm 117 and verse 1. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples exalt him. Exalt, another word for praise or worship. All the peoples. Peoples. My, my, my grammar doesn't like that word. It keeps underlining it. Uh, as I was preparing this message, every time I went back to it, there what it was, underlining peoples. <laughs> Not all the people, not all one people, all the peoples. <laughs> Surely you don't mean that. Yes, he means that. He means everybody, every tribe and tongue. Sounds like Revelations 7 and verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and for the lamb they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands now i mean john is a clever guy but how did he know everyone was there all all the nations all the peoples how did how did he he know that well they were all different they worshipped in different languages they had different hair, different lips, different noses, different skin tones. Uh, some were tall and uh, slim, others short and fat. <laughs> A bit like me at the moment after um, lockdown. This is our future. This is who we are and who we are going to be. Quoting Isaiah 11 and verse 10. Again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse, that's Jesus coming from the line of David, the root of Jesse will spring up, the one who will rise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. And that's us, that we're the Gentiles. So the plan then, what was the plan? Well, there was um, Jesus... He was the Jews Messiah, yes? But he is also the Gentiles Christ. Messiah is a Hebrew word, meaning the saviour, the chosen one, the anointed one. And Christ is a Greek word, meaning the saviour, the anointed one. They're interchangeable uh, today. Back then, the Jews were expecting a Messiah. Nobody else was expecting a Christ but he came anyway. So from the beginning, this was the plan. Adam and Eve started a family. Noah saved his family. 
Abraham had a son, created the nation, the Jewish nation, and was intended that his offspring would bless all the peoples. Moses rescues the nation. The prophets speak about our time, speak about the nations. Jesus comes to Israel for the nations. Paul calls himself an apostle to the Gentiles, an apostle to the nations. So in the Bible, there's a couple, a family, a nation, the nations. That's the plan. So that we all praise him. We all glorify him. We prove his wisdom. Jumping to Ephesians 3 and verse 10, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Now I have another picture for you. <laughs> and the third is worse than the other two. I don't know if you can see this very well, but there it is. That is a couple of manifolds. So it's in. Uh, it's supposed to be an engine and the air comes in to the different parts of the engine through manifolds and the fuel comes in and there's a big explosion in the middle and then the gases come out through another manifold into the exhaust. That's what the Bible <laughs> means when it says manifold. Manifold means many. And there's a picture of it. Many different pipes going here, there and everywhere. Now, there wasn't the internal combustion engine back back then. <laughs> so although manifold means many and various, and the engine is a good example of that. Um, but back, what did it mean when when the first people read this? What did it what did it mean when Paul's letter landed in Rome? What did it mean to them? So in their day, people lived in in cities, walled cities or uh, or villages, and in the in the cities, particularly even in foreign cities, there would be the different quarters. There'll be the Roman quarter, the Jewish quarter, the Greek quarter, and any people group that lived in, among them, lived in the city, would have their own section of the city. So it feels a bit like Bloemfontein. Um, <laughs> and often there would be walls separating the different sections. So the Roman section would be over here. They'd have a nice wall with a couple of gates in it. Uh, and the Jews would have a section over here. Uh, and they would have... Uh, you know, houses with good security, and uh, and then the Greeks would have their own quarter over there, and um, yeah, maybe the Nigerians would be somewhere somewhere else and have a, have a little section of the city that they could call their own, and they would each worship their own gods in their own part of the city. The Christians, however, they came from all of these different areas. And so they would meet in the common areas, in the marketplaces, in the, the hired halls. And um, as such, they would be available. Anybody could connect with, with the Christian community in the city. They weren't holed up in some, some upper room for very long. Once the Holy Spirit came, once the power came, they were visible. They were out in the city and drawing all sorts to them. They would accept and care for anyone. Hence Ephesians 2 and verse 14, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. So in, in the Christian community, there was no longer a wall between the Greek section of the city and the Roman section of the city because they had come out from those places and they now came together for worship, for fellowship. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave 
nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So the New Testament expects the different races and nations, the rich and the poor, the male and the female, the young and the old, to worship together, to come together. Any way that you can measure us or separate us or box us is excluded by these scriptures. Why? Why is this so important? Why can't I just go back to England, uh, go back to Essex and, uh, and, and worship with my people, with uh, people who are like me. Well, maybe not with this length of beard, hey, Cheryl, but, you know, people that I understand, people that drink tea, people um, that a and enjoy a walk in the countryside, people who are so like me that you could mistake them for me. Why, why, why is, is that not? God's plan. Well, if we take his chosen nation, Israel, the Jews, practicing Jews today represent about 0.2% of the worldwide population. So they, they can't really glorify God to the nations. There's not enough of them. Let's, let's look at uh at language that was one of the things every every tribe and language so if we take some of the languages that are spoken in in Bloemfontein so Afrikaans speakers there's a few more of them than there are of practicing Jews yeah 0.3 percent of the worldwide population speak Afrikaans how about Susutu sorry guys 0.05 percent of the world population speak Susutu. Ah, then it must be English then, mustn't it? No, only 20 percent of the world's population speak English. I mean, understand English. Can, you could share a Bible verse with them and they would know what you're saying. Christians, on the other hand, the total popula Christian population in the world is currently about 31%. It's the largest religious group in the world, uh, and it represents about 31% of the world population. So one in three in the world is a Christian. So we all just need to reach two others then. Yeah? Just two. Two others. Yeah? If I... Uh, share the gospel with two other people and every other Christian shares the gospel with two other people. We're nearly there. Some of the keen ones, they can try for three. Hey? That's, the, that's where we're at now, today. The kingdom grows and grows and grows. And yeah, unfortunately, some of these people are, are far away from me. <laughs> um but just two people, you and me, if we just if we just saw two salvations in our lifetime and every other Christian saw two salvations in their lifetime. Now, in this generation, everyone, almost everyone covered. Hey, the keen ones, the evangelists among you, three, hey, three. Yeah, got it. Fantastic. And then worship, praise, is everywhere and includes everyone. I just want to pray, pray for us. I want to pray verse uh, 13 again of, um, of Romans 15. May the God of hope fill you and me with all joy and peace as you and I trust in him so that you and I may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As, as I land this, just a couple of questions for you. So we're a gate, you and I. Yeah, we're, 
we're a gate in a city wall. So we're, we're designed for traffic. We're designed uh, to be with people, to fellowship with people, to build people up. So do we, do we look, do our lives look like this gate? Or do we look a little bit like that stronghold, you know, with the ladder that we've kicked away and we're just doing our own thing? making it as difficult as possible for God to come into your heart and for you and he to bless his community through you. Do your relationships mirror that manifold, that, that many and various? Um, or does everyone that you spend time with speak your language? I don't know. Um, do you unconditionally accept people as God does, whether they speak your language or not? Then, then we can worship together. The song I started with. Do you hear the mountains tremble? That's, that's the future. If we get this, if we build true spiritual communities that are not blind, but inclusive of every difference, of the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the black and the white, those from different languages, those who are aliens in our city, as well, like me, and those who, who can go, can count their generations back in the free state. If we get this, the mountains will tremble the strongholds will come down. It's our worship. It's our acceptance of each other and our differences and our weaknesses and our failings. That's the thing. That's the thing that makes the difference. That's what builds his kingdom. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not, it's not always comfortable. Yeah. We, there's so much room for misunderstanding, for offence, for confusion. Uh, and when the pressure's on, uh, like now, like this pandemic, like the economy, three million jobs lost in South Africa in the last three months. When the pressure's on, we can revert to who we used to be because it feels more comfortable and it feels safe. We can go home, we can pull up the ladder and we can hide. Or, oops, <laughs> we can be a doorway for the Holy Spirit to change South Africa and wherever you are or whether wherever you are called to will be changed forever. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for each one listening, for each heart present, that they would know that they would know that they are yours. They are your sons. They love you. They enjoy you. They are called into enjoyment forever, as Calvin said. And that they also love their neighbour. I pray for each one as they listen that you'd speak to them about a neighbour even, uh, a colleague, a family member, someone that they're in contact with on Facebook and never actually meet even. That, that, that they would know in their inner man their call to reach and accept people who are different to them. Thank you, Lord. Bless you guys. Have a great week. Uh, keep focused on him. Keep worshipping. I was singing this morning uh, on my own <laughs> and, uh, and enjoying God. I'm enjoying God forever. And 
because I've got this, because uh, I understand stand this, there's that connection with him that is amazing, that is so refreshing. So I just I just get connected to him uh, through these times. So bless you, keep safe, uh, and see you on the other side. Amen.